Assalamualaikum to all kartu and very good evening uh, to all the listeners out there. So you are listening to IUM FM today with DJ Amna and DJ Isha. Uh, for empathy, empathy is the key slot which is imparting knowledge on disabilities. So Isha, um, today we are going to discuss about something which is I think is common um, to be to be heard in society, but is rarely discussed about it. So, today's topic is uh, post-traumatic stress di- uh, disorder, uh, also known as PTSD, mm-hmm. and we bring uh, you guys our special, special very special guest and amazing guest. Uh, and I think she is very expert in this um, topic. So, she has. We're going to uh, brief a little bit about her. Uh, she has a diploma in social science, which is counseling, and then um, not only that, she also have a bachelor of computing and diploma in computer studies. Um, also, also, uh, I've been told that uh, she also famous among the students, uh, psychology, psychology student, student because yeah. of her friend uh, friendliness. friendliness. And not other than not other than that is Miss Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, oh it's pleasure that. to invite you, actually. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. so Ms. Pam, can you introduce yes. yourself a bit? Okay, so uh, my name is Miss Pam. Uh, Miss Pam. <laughs> but you can call me Miss Pam. Most of my students call me Miss Pam. At the moment, um, some of them might be wondering uh, why I'm talking about this topic when actually I have some computer background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. confused. So my first degree is actually in computing and information systems, mm. Mm. and then after that, I went to pursue psychology, and so I actually went on to pursue psychology, and then I graduated from UIA, mm. doing a master's in uh, psychology, and then now I am completing the PhD. So it's like um, it's a wonderful journey here. So that's one of the things I'm doing, also teaching in the department of psychology oh. yeah, over here. Yeah, so I'm really happy to share with you guys whatever you would like to know. Yeah, um, we also. <laughs> so, I mean, um, a lot. Uh, I see, like, there's a lot of your, like, achievement, and, like, you, you look so young. Oh, wow. So, like. When is your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And, yeah, uh, thanks to God for all these achievements. And um, looking young, I think. You guys look young too. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been told my friend that you're from Penang. Am I yeah, right? I'm from Penang, yeah. Oh. Are you from Penang too? No, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, the first questions that uh, we are really curious to know, and I guess um, the listeners out there want to know as well. Um, so, can you um, explain or define what is PTSD, PTSD. or post traumatic stress disorder as a form of disability? Post-traumatic stress disorder is one of the psychological disorders and mental health disorders that we have today. And it's very much, you can say, think of about it as a very severe form of anxiety and a very severe form of anxiousness whereby it's not just not just a small amount of stress. If you think about it as an elevated, heightened amount of arousal and anx- in, in terms of anxiety and this usually does not take place immediately after an event. It usually takes place after a certain duration of time, whether after a month or more than a month, and it can be even more than three months, more than six months, after a severe event has happened. And sometimes, a lot of people feel like PTSD only af- affects, you know, like, um, for example, maybe soldiers who come back after the war, or, you know, the army. But actually, it does not only need to involve a very large, extensive, severe, traumatic event. Mm -hmm. It can even be a daily life kind of event that is traumatic to the person. Mm -hmm. For example, losing a best friend, Mm -hmm. or even losing uh, the death of a loved one. Mm -hmm. So something like that can also be, uh, you know, somebody can also have PTSD from that. Because it can be, one of the things that you can say to look out for symptoms are that high amount of anxiety and also flashbacks that mm. keep recurring mm. back mm. and also this you know neurotic kind of you know, emotions that they have mm. or they suddenly have avoidance mm. towards certain that remind them of that traumatic event and they suddenly have 
a heightened amount of arousal. Arousal meaning that they feel extreme fear, extreme anxiousness, mm -hmm. and extreme nervousness when they are faced mm -hmm. with that path. Mm -hmm. And then they also feel this kind of like, um, you know, besides that, they also have this kind of like fear and extreme guilt. This, this changes in cognition and mood disorders that they, that they experience. So this extreme amount of excessive guilt or fear depending on the situation that happened. So I've seen so many people experience this and I think they do not even know that they might be experiencing that. And I'm not even sure if it's exactly that because it takes a lot of you know symptoms to be met to fulfill the criteria. But I definitely do see symptoms in many people. Can be that they, they also can be the uh, baby can, so PTSD actually, right, it has a lot of very similar symptoms as anxiety. Mm -hmm. It can involve panic attacks. Mm -hmm. So not all panic attacks might be a result of PTSD mm -hmm. or might be connected to PTSD, but definitely one of the symptoms involved in PTSD can also involve panic attacks because it's a heightened arousal of mood, right? So it can definitely involve panic attacks. Mm -hmm. okay. I was wondering how that, uh, the person that uh, known that PTSD uh, right, how it can start is when a certain situation is so significant and it is person that it becomes it goes to a level where it's totally above their normal threshold of being able to cope and then it becomes so overwhelming that suddenly it goes to another level whereby they maybe they kind of like you know suppress that emotion at that moment it's so traumatizing they suppress it that this suppression suddenly goes into traumatic stress you know disorder but because it is suppressed it goes into post so it can be more than three months or six months and then suddenly it emerges up and comes back for example somebody who uh, who i noticed right he lost his brother and you know they are both adults they're both married they are children but then he lost his brother and at that on, at that time he was still coping okay everyone was so amazed like he's coping okay he's mm -hmm. actually his brother is like his best friend mm -hmm. and he was coping okay he was making jokes even mm -hmm. a long time after a period of time suddenly he started to break down and mm -hmm. when everyone was kind of mourning in the beginning and he became kind of calmer and they were coping okay that was when his breakdown started mm -hmm. after like you know let's say a, a, a long period of time then he started to feel like oh my gosh i feel so difficult to cope and he felt like so sad that is when he really started to cry so you can say that that emotion in him right mm. really came out very uh, much later mm. so you, that's one example or even all these war veterans right mm. um like these very famous war heroes veterans mm. and then suddenly they come back to their normal life mm. after being exposed every day to bombing killing mm. shooting watching their friends losing limbs mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they come back to this family life with kids mm -hmm. if american sniper is it was that one of those movies you can see like that it's a true story mm -hmm. so he was so used to witnessing all this like really extreme violence with the you know with the drill mm -hmm. and how they torture mm -hmm. the victim mm -hmm. that later when he went came back and after the war was over even when he hears the grass cutter sound mm. it reminds him of that drilling sound mm -hmm. that they use on torturing the victim and it made him go back to that mm. so it, it affects our, our senses sometimes for some people it's the smell for some people it's the familiar sound like the, they heard that particular kind of music playing when the parent passed away mm. at that time mm. they heard certain kind of show was going on when that really terrible event happened, you know, the accident happened, or you know, certain kind of music was playing in the background, or maybe they had, um, for example, they were eating a certain kind of food, and then that particular kind of thing happened. Or for this case, it was the the drill sound, mm. which something familiar with that even can affect that. Mm. I got a friend like you know in UIA we have so many different kinds of mm. friends from different countries. Yeah. Mm. So I have a friend who's from Somalia, mm. and then once it was you know, maybe it was. Uh, Idul Fitri or it was like maybe Chinese New Year or Deepavali mm. and then there was a lot of fireworks going mm. on and then she was so afraid and she told me Pam I think there's some bombing happening mm. or oh, this this is definitely 
you know, um, definitely this is like, this is gunshot. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this is gunshot. Mm-hmm. And I told her, this is Deepavali, <laughs> or maybe this is Hari Raya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is actually the fireworks. Mm-hmm. And then she was so adamant, you know, she was like saying, are you sure or not? It really sounds like gunshot. Mm-hmm. So for them, you can say she's still functioning well. It didn't mm-hmm. in- impair her functioning. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't call it PTSD. Mm-hmm. But definitely there's some post-traumatic stress symptoms. So you see, to, to classify as a disorder, right, mm. it has to impair the functioning of the person. That means they cannot function anymore. It is like they cannot function in their daily life. Like in that movie, American Sniper, I was telling you, it was impairing his functioning. All of a sudden, he was going into depression, and it's very much overlapping with anxiety, depressive symptoms. It overlaps a lot. So he was going into that up to the extent he couldn't function. He would just stare at the blank TV, and the TV wasn't even on. In his mind, he is somewhere else. Mm. He cannot function like a normal person. You can say that is PTSD. But my friend who, uh, from Somalia, mm. she still can function. So mm. there might be some post-traumatic stress symptom. Mm. So episodes, there are symptoms and episodes. So it's not disorder. Mm. To be classified as a disorder, it has to impair the functioning of the person. Mm. So you, mm. these are some of the symptoms that they can go through mm. and then it comes back at the end. They can be triggered by sounds, by sight, by feelings, by certain kind of events. Mm. Yeah, for me, actually, <laughs> yeah. I've never heard about it. And I did think, like, um, before, I did think it will go that serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it may not even be only classified only to war veteran style. Mm. Sometimes it can even be just think about, remember the movie Central Intelligence, oh, yes. right? Uh. With um, Dwayne Johnson, mm. The Rock. Remember, he would um, he was actually bullied as a child, mm. and then later he would try to make sure he's so strong, and you know he would kind of like overcome all his weaknesses mm. and make sure that he is a very successful human being. Mm. But when he was triggered by meeting the bully mm. years later, mm. he went back to his old self. Mm. So that is some form of post traumatic stress. Mm. He was functioning well, so I wouldn't mm. call it disorder, but definitely there was a re- flashback mm. that happened that even though he's so strong, he became that little boy again. Mm. So definitely you can see some post-traumatic stress symptoms in that. Mm. And he couldn't fight back. Mm. He became like so, like you know, like cannot function. And mm. can, at that moment, he couldn't fight back. Mm. So you can definitely say that that trigger mm. definitely triggered a lot of flashback in him mm. and made him like he is so lean and, and he cannot, you know, function at that moment. So it can trigger us, you know, like I see some students, they cannot um, present during presentation because something that somebody said to them during that presentation might have triggered back some past memory of of insecurity mm. that they experienced when they were a child or during early primary school. So that triggers also can be a little bit of post trauma, you can say. Okay, mm. so um, I guess that is only like the introduction to the post traumatic disorder. But we are along. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh, we went deep into it. Yeah. So and I can't wait to to know for them more uh, but uh, we need to take a break first. We'll okay. take a break first and then we'll So we'll be back. So welcome back. back to our slot. So So we have uh, we hope you have a good break. So a very nice break. So, yes. um, Miss how how are you feeling? Are you feeling right I'm now? feeling good. It's oh. nice to be here with all of you. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, next question would be, um, which category of people does the PTSD usually occur? Is it more to like female, uh, female, female or male, or is there like any statistic that shows uh, especially male, 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 uh, uh, male uh, does have uh, PTSD more or female? I think in terms of her latest statistics, I mean, I can say that usually even for depression or anything, um, there is a higher amount of, let's say, suicide rate among mm. male than male. female. Mm. Females have a higher rate of attempting, mm. but males have a higher rate of finishing the job. Oh. Because if they make up their mind, mm. usually the higher percentage of them to actually carry it out. Because they, they have that, um, maybe you can say, they're sure they mm. really thought it mm. through and they are like kind of like you know you can say got they have the guts to like mm. carry it out and really really do it but it does not say females don't have the guts to do it it just mm. means that we most of them function more based on intuition right mm. so they might feel sometimes like they might be very sad and they attempt 
to hurt themselves. Mm. But even though they attempt to commit suicide, they might have a little bit of fear to actually carry mm -hmm. it out. So the percentage, you can say, more males actually carry it out. But in terms of PTSD, I'm just thinking because PTSD sometimes involves a lot of suppression mm -hmm. and flashbacks coming back. So if you want to say who usually suppresses, I think if you look at the majority, you suppress the emotions to probably want to play the role of uh, being strong mm -hmm. and really want to be stable, to take care of maybe anyone who they are looking after. So I think they might have a higher percentage in that. And they're also exposed to a lot of different kind of stressors. Mm -hmm. Females usually have a tendency to share their emotions and express with their friends mm -hmm. or their loved ones, their family members. But males, they... Mm -hmm. They just secret like, do not uh, express their feelings. Right? Exactly. They usually don't have the tendency to express that mm -hmm. much as compared to females. Mm -hmm. Some of them might, mm -hmm. but some might not. Be like females like, Hey, are you free today? Can we just please? I need to like really story story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they really want to share. Mm -hmm. But males, they might suppress it. They may not be with their guy friends all the mm -hmm. time just sharing about that. Mm -hmm. They might talk more about other things. Mm -hmm. So I think they might have a more risk, you know, higher risk from what I can see. Only like sharing their problems, uh, other people might think that they are weak or something because males yes, exactly. tend to um, see that thing as something that is weak. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. That's right. I think that's, that's very true as well. the effect that PTSD usually uh, happen in individual, uh, does it affect to the surrounding, surrounding too? too? It's like you mentioned about the, if they heard about the something like firework, mm. is it, yes. if, if, uh, if for the people, if, what about their family? Ah, I see. Yes, it definitely does affect their loved ones. Mm. Because imagine seeing somebody you love and care for so much, right? It's like not behaving in a way that is their, their normal self. Mm. They look very scared all the time. Because one of the key symptoms, right, remember, is arousal. Mm. So they have a heightened hypersensitivity to everything around them. They have a very high, you know, like um, sadness and, and anxiety to different kinds of stimulus. They have excessive guilt and self-blame mm. to different situations. So you can see, like, you know, why are they behaving in this way? Oh no, this is not how they were last time. Mm -hmm. Like even a small thing makes them cry. Mm -hmm. Even a small matter makes them so anxious. Mm -hmm. Are you are you angry with me? Are you, mm -hmm. you sure you won't leave me, right? Mm -hmm. Especially people who have uh, lost their loved one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, let's say, a friend lost their best friend, you know, mm -hmm. in a fight. Mm -hmm. Then they feel like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. Then after months later, they realize like, oh, I'm actually not okay. I can't mm -hmm. imagine, I cannot accept. So they become very scared with their friends any small disagreement are you angry with me mm. are you sure you're not, you're not angry with me right mm. and then they start to cry i have a friend who did that to me mm. she was very 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 sad about losing her friend mm. i mean you can say it was anxiety attack mm. it wasn't exactly post-traumatic you know it was more acute stress you know acute mm. stress is like the difference is acute stress disorder asd mm. is like very much immediately after the event within one week, two uh. weeks, it can even be one month sometimes, mm. like it's very immediate. Mm -mm. So hers, I would say, is ASD more. But let's say, if her same symptoms appeared only months later, mm. then it's PTSD. That means in the beginning, it wasn't a, um, you know, apparent. Mm. So uh, they would normally, uh, be, you know, very extreme, like, mm. are you sure you're not angry with me? You won't mm. leave me, right? And then, oh, another ex good example is somebody who I know, mm. which is my family member. Mm. When her father passed away, she was stable, smiling. Mm. She was happy to see us at her, the, the funeral. Mm. And then only months, you know, my aunties, everyone was so worried about her. Mm. Like, are you okay? Do you know what happened? Then they would show her the photo, you know. Do you know when she passed away? Then she would like, she didn't want to see the photo. Ah, this one actually, right? Actually, now when I think about it, talking to you, actually PTSD actually it's like avoidance very much avoidance she she was aware at that time she's but she avoid yes actually she's a slow learner uh, but, but very advanced slow learner uh, like she can join normal school you know but at uh, that time right she was kicked out uh, that was many years ago she's uh, like early 30s now mm. so at that time right they don't have much awareness you know about mm. slow learners mm. now they call it like intellectual disability mm. now can we have scholar cars uh -huh. so they will put them in scholar cars uh -huh. you know 
Last time, if slow learner, they put them all together with autism, Down syndrome, and mix all. So when my auntie saw like she came back behaving, imitating the kid there, my auntie also took her out from that special school. But now they have very special, like a very different kind of scholar class mm. just for the slow learner. So they all can kind of like be at the same level. So it's different now. So at that time, right, she, but she can understand very well. She can communicate very well. She's kind of like a high level, you can say, of intellectual disability. Mm. But the thing is, when her father passed away, everyone was so worried. Does she understand? Is she okay? So she actually understands, you know, she's watching. She will look at the, the body of Arwah, right? Then she will cry and cry. Then she'll be okay. Mm. Very, very fast crying. She'll be like, crying, maybe five minutes, then okay. And then smiling and then laughing yeah. and so happy to see all of us there mm. because, you know, we also didn't get together for a long time. Mm. Then, but she never really cried much. Like she never, really, it looks like she didn't accept it. Mm. Then my aunties will always show my, my uncle's photo to her. her. Then later, right, she would always say, no, I cannot see, okay, I don't want to mm. see. Then she became very afraid. She would be with my un- other aunties. My other aunties would go to work. She would look forward to them coming back. Mm. Then she would say, because she used to do that with her father, mm. wait for him to come back. Mm. Because she's not schooling, kan? Mm. She's not schooling. She doesn't have college. She would just wait for him. She would do other things, but her routine is in the evening, to mm. wait for the person to come back. Mm. So she started to do that with my auntie. Mm. And then she told my auntie once, you know, you won't leave. She became like so afraid of that, of being, of losing somebody close to her. And then once they had a group, right, together where they have a sharing moment, mm. it's like a community group, you know. Mm. Then this kind of group sharing moment, sharing session, her mother is not in the group. Her mother is in another group, uh. like a group sesh, session. Mm. Then once they had a group where they're sharing about what they feel, suddenly do not know what led her mm. to share. When it came to her turn, mm. she shared with the person, you know, I lost my father. And then she cried and cried so much and hugged that that stranger mm. lady. But somehow she had a connection. And that is where she really had a breakdown. Mm. And she cried and she hugged. And that is where she really had the closure that day. Mm. So you can say that was months, maybe even a year later. Mm. That was one example of PTSD. Mm. You can definitely... The loved ones, like as you were asking me, <coughs> because the loved ones feel very worried, they feel very sad, like what's going on. And in the case of American Sniper, which is a true story, the, the wife felt like what's going on with him, he would wake up all of a sudden mm. with a nightmare. All this flashback happening. Mm. There is one story, also a true story, if you watch Heaven and Earth, the movie, right? Mm. The, have you watched it before? No. It's an old movie. <laughs> it's not your time. But you know, the, the father is a white guy, which mm. is an American soldier, mm. during the Vietnam War. Mm. He marries a Vietnamese lady. Mm. So suddenly he will wake up in the middle of the night like thinking that somebody is going to shoot him. Mm. Then he started to become very violent towards his wife. Mm. And in the end, it's like he started to like, you know, want to kill her. But then he realized like, okay, it's a dream. Mm. And in the end, he actually shot himself. Is it, uh, what do you call it? Splick? Splick? Uh, no, this one is not split personality. Oh. It's like, um, it's kind of flashback mm. oh. of real events. Mm. Flashback of seeing people without leg. Flashback of seeing people gonna bomb him or shoot him. So d- out of self-defense, mm. he will feel like as if his wife is someone else, you mm. know, and he wants to kill her. And then in the end, right, he felt like it's too much, and he cannot take his stress anymore. He shot himself. Mm. In the end. Mm. Mm. Story about my friends. Like my friend lost her grandmother okay. about when she was two thousand thirteen, one of second, yeah. And then, uh, she looked she she looks fine, uh, after the after her grandmother passed away. But uh, a month like five months later, she was like very like quiet. To, to be like, not sharing the problem. But after a year, she shared problem with me. She shared, uh, she told me that she felt guilt, uh, guilty towards her, uh, her grandmother because she felt that uh, she is the number like uh, reason. She's the cause that 
uh, her grandma uh, passed away because her grandma is uh, par- uh was a paralyzed and she she's the one who took uh, t- the care of the grandma her grandma and then she felt that she was uh, the cause of the her grandma uh, her grandma death and and she, she n- I never see her cry and she was like when she told me when she shared her problem she never cried she was like oh I forgive you I felt guilty towards my towards my grandma and she told me what what she wanted to do to to to, do, to not feel guilty toward her grandma she she that she can feel guilty toward her grandma and but yeah until today she feels still feel guilty the, to get into the university but uh, I was just wondering, is that PTSD also? Um, let's see, if it's impairing her functioning, mm. you can say it's PTSD. Remember, uh, maybe that is not... But definitely PTSD, like episode, like mm. post-traumatic stress uh, symptoms and post-traumatic stress episode is definitely that. But it wasn't a disorder for her because she can still function. Like your friend has coping skills so you can see like she has very good coping skills she, she's able to kind of like find a way to cope mm-hmm. by saying to herself all right i will study for my grandma mm-hmm. this is for her nanti in heaven she's watching down i know this is for her mm-hmm. so i'm guessing that you know she has a way of coping <coughs> and she is that's how she copes so she, i don't think she has a disorder but most probably she has post traumatic stress episode or uh, mm-hmm. post traumatic stress symptoms definitely but it's a really good thing that she's talking about it right now. Yeah. Because, you know, you mentioned a ver- very, very good symptoms like, you know, she has this avoidance kind of thing and then she really felt... It's called the changes in cognition and mood. That is one of the major symptoms, you know. It's actually like avoidance, arousal, then these changes in cognition and mood, which can cause excessive guilt. It's not even their fault, but they immediately, you know, they keep on blaming themselves. It's not even in their control, but they keep having that the irrational kind of thoughts, you know. That's one of it. So it's good that she's opening up to you, and it's really nice of you to be supporting her. So before it goes into disorder, it's good that she addresses this this guilt because that's the prominent symptom that she's having. To that can that can be helped, you know. So make sure she gets help for that. Either you can support her. Yeah, but uh, even though it's already even though she get into the university, but. Sometimes she all, she feel that she still feel guilty about that. Sometimes she have the suicide suicide thought and suicide attempts also. So I I sometimes that had no idea how to do actually. Okay. Oh, she does have the suicide yeah. thought. So it looks like. And you know. and also she have been like sexual harassment too. Mm. Uh, Couple together with yeah. all of that, then it's quite high risk for having the disorder then because you know. It, now that you mentioned about the suicidal thoughts and ideation, right? That is quite a high risk. I'm, I'm actually concerned. It's, it's good for her to definitely get maybe professional help. Or <coughs> um, as a friend, what you can do is, and you know, what others can do out there, right, is really support that friend and really ha- try to ask her. Instead of telling her, oh, don't think about it, it's not <coughs> true, it's not real, <coughs> that is suppressing, you know, that, that can make it worse. It's good to address. Okay, where exactly is this guilt coming from? Where exactly is this sad, sadness or stress coming from? And what makes you feel like wanting to end your life? So we slowly address one by one, you know? Like we're trying to find the root cause right now. Because the, the wanting to end her life usually comes from, could be coming to the, from the guilt. So if we address the guilt, maybe one by one would be addressed one shot. But it really sounds like your friend might be going towards. I think she, she might actually have a ch- have the disorder. Mm-hmm. It's good for her to really, you know. Mm-hmm. She did. It's not working. It's not working. And uh, she told me about the. She yeah she she has been spread about the sexual harassment too, and she told me uh, recently she be like some kids, like. It's like. Pasha, and she feel like she feel like 
What's wrong with you? It's, it's, it's very uncomfortable actually And she she cried And then she's shaking It's male or female? Oh yeah, it's a uh, female. female A male Male, male kid uh, It's a boy Boy and it's a kid Yeah oh. She felt After that she she was crying and shaking <clears throat> Like uh, traumatic? Yeah Yeah, it's possible It's possible that she's not disclosing everything to you as well To her I'm not sure whether there's any kind of past trauma Mm-hmm. Abuse has happened and transpired in her past. There might be something that might be triggering that. Mm-hmm. Might have suppressed that. Even that might be another stress for her, post trauma for her. Mm-hmm. The grandmother passing away might be one. This sexual, you know, encounter in the past might be another one, mm-hmm. possibly. Or it might just be a trigger of something else, you know, that we need to really discover. Mm-hmm. It's like this post-traumatic stress disorder uh, will last forever or it's just like mm-hmm. for a short period <coughs> of time? Yeah. Um, actually, right, this can, if they get help early, they can definitely get over it and they can definitely get help. Like, for example, your friend is trying to cope by seeking the meaning in her life and by, by trying to study and you know kind of like finding a way to cope in that way but if people don't seek for help and they just live their lives like that for example if her right now she has suicidal ideation and she just lets it be and she just suppresses it I'm concerned if something bigger triggers her then it's very dangerous so I think it's about seeking for help if they can seek for help they can definitely get better with, with you know talk therapy and really trying to address that fear that happened in the past because just imagine losing a, a very good best friend I know friends who have lost their best friend it's like maybe at that time they cope kind of okay you know they also cried and everything but later on if they cannot pass by their house or they cannot even hear the person's name they will immediately cry there is some evidence you know of post trauma happening because if it's more than a year then definitely they need to get some help because it might be affecting them, it, it might be affecting them deeply. I'm just concerned if another person in their family passes away, mm-hmm. or, or anywhere, or friend passes away, if that trigger brings back like double the mourning from before and then now again. So if they really need to get help, but they can. They definitely can recover and manage their situation with good coping skills and you know, feeling, talking about it to the right person, of course. So it is actually traceable uh, if we try to get a solution by trying to talk to a um, professional or yeah. other people. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we will talk more, I guess, in uh, after the break. So first, uh, we're so we'll be back. We're back. Okay, and this is. Uh, I am FM. Yeah, so it's lots of empathy. It's key. It's okay. We already talked about uh, the the experience that uh, what the PTSD uh, is, mm. what the effect, what the symptoms, and so on. And also, Miss already told us about the what she exper- experienced and about the PTSD person. Mm. So, uh, we would like to know what the okay. What you, you just say that the role of this uh, the role of society is like. We need to, uh, as as a friend, we need to, like us, us, our friend, like, mm. oh, you you cannot do need it and just like give it advice, like, give yeah. give them, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then what, uh, what can that beside them giving them advice? What can that people do other than that? Mm. Other than that, other than being a uh, yeah. uh, besides giving, I I would say it's maybe it's good if we can avoid the. Like giving advice, mm. so there's a difference between giving advice and giving like empathy and support mm. and compassion. So giving advice, a lot of people tend to do that, mm. and then when they do that, it kind of makes the person with PTSD like suppress a little bit. Mm. For example, if advice, for example, then if let's say if I tell my friend who is very much mourning the loss of her mother or mm. someone, then I, I say to her, "Don't blame yourself. Why are you blame yourself? Mm. You know it's not good if you do like that. Why not?" Today, 
you tell yourself I'm not gonna blame myself anymore and then you start to live your life for your mom if I if I say that to her like an advice way it sounds like a very good advice actually it's very good advice but sometimes when we go in the advice way right we kind of like miss out what is really the root cause mm. we, so a lot of good friends they have very good advice mm. but the people who are undergoing the problem they might not really feel better because they are missing the root cause mm. so it's good for us to always keep in mind okay identify the root cause as my as a friend to her i must identify the root cause so you can ask so this is a simple basic skill that you can you, you guys can use now psychological skill right mm -hmm. just remember identify the root cause first okay so for example um can i ask you what exactly is is causing this guilt right now where is this guilt coming from this excessive guilt mm -hmm. so do not judge the person so really avoid judgment one of the core conditions which I, I like person-centered therapy a lot <laughs> so I really like to and also I like you know I mean, different kinds of therapy like psychodynamic as well so they always like to find out where is this coming from mm. where is this root cause actually mm. coming from so in person-centered also they talk about non-judgmentalism mm. even though if the person might be having post-trauma about some event that we feel is small mm. let's say the boy, the small boy touching the girl that, that just now you've mentioned, right? We might be thinking, eh, hey, what's wrong with that? It's just a small matter. Mm. Yeah. Oh, she's quite rational, Lana. Mm. But then we do not know where it's coming from. Mm. So the first core condition is don't judge them. Non-judgmentalism. So that means we have a totally unconditional way of looking at our friend. Unconditional positive regard, they call it. That means unconditionally we look at them and like, accept them without any condition that you know um, if you actually want to be a human being you must have this 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 criteria no we totally don't judge them and we say okay you have this kind of symptom of fear you know when the boy touched you right mm -hmm. what do you think is causing that fear mm -hmm. where you think that uh, discomfort comes from mm -hmm. has anything happened to you before in the past that might be linked to triggering this mm -hmm. discomfort today something like that you can identify the root cause and then Empathy is one technique that is very useful, but if let's say you are not really trained in psychology, right? You have to be very careful of using empathy because what empathy entails is you put yourself in the other person's shoes, which means you try to understand their worldview. But I'm just concerned if let's say some people who may not know how to detach from your friend's problem, mm -hmm. so if you do not know how to detach yourself, and you put yourself in your friend's shoes, right? Mm -hmm. I'm concerned you might absorb their problem, mm -hmm. internalize it into your own life, and you cannot function suddenly. Mm -hmm. And then you get the trauma. So you have to be very careful of how you use empathy. So let's say if you're the kind of person who tends to absorb other people's problems, be very careful. So what I learned also lately is like having compassion. You can have compassion. That's a very safe way as well. If you're confident you will not absorb the person's problem, then you can proceed to the empathy part. But if you're very concerned, you might end up exhausting yourself, absorbing the problem. I would uh, encourage you to go towards the compassion part, mm. which means you can have compassion, mm. like give your friends support and compassion. Show them compassion, like if they cannot function in their studies, in their assignment, do not judge them and do not scold them and advise them. Like, you know, it's very easy for you to, such an easy assignment. I, I told you already. You must do like this, like this. Okay, that's not really. That's a very good intention, but it's a very good advice. But do you see, it's missing the element of empathy and compassion here. Yeah. So have compassion and non-judgmentalism, and say to them, "I can see." Ah, reflect. You can reflect. So another skill that you can use is reflection. Reflection of feeling. Mm -hmm. I can see that you are feeling very, very hurt right now, mm -hmm. thinking about what happened. So a very good technique that my, my lecturer used to teach me is um, you can say, you are feeling blah, 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 dash, 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 dash. You are feeling very stressed right now mm. from what I can see mm. about what happened. Just by you reflecting, do you know it's very comforting to them? Mm. Let's say I'm going through a lot of stress, a lot of busyness, mm. a lot of overwhelmed feelings. Especially at this time of the semester, mm. most lecturers and students are going through a lot. Yeah. So imagine if I'm going through so much and I'm feeling stressed, and somebody says to me, you know, I can see that you look kind of mm. tired or you look really stressed. You're going through a lot right now. You know, I can see that it's really overwhelming mm. what you're facing. I want to actually like, uh, 
see what we are going through, right? Yeah. So I feel like appreciated. Exactly. You yeah. feel so understood, mm -hmm. appreciated, mm -hmm. not judged. Mm -hmm. And if somebody hits the bull's eye with this feeling, mm -hmm. reflection, re or feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Even that can be therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And you can just say like, yes exactly that's how i feel you know somebody did that to me before in the past when i was so tired mm -hmm. and they said you know i know it's not easy what you're going through mm -hmm. it's stressful mm -hmm. and then even that can bring tears to your eyes you know mm -hmm. because somebody understand mm -hmm. so that's a very good way to um support your friend mm -hmm. like uh non-judgmentalism empathy compassion reflection of feeling and yeah all of these ways what I usually do it when my friend like when well, she's stressed and that's on, I ask her up like you look in your clothes. Okay, yeah. uh, instead of we share a photo, we go out. Yeah. We really okay. really uh, share a photo actually. Yeah. And it comes like uh, she really like cannot like. Control. Uh, control herself and she will exactly. tell me. She will tell me. And other that we that oh, uh, we hang out together, go eat together, just like mix. To make thing, uh, to make she forget about her problem for awesome. a while. That's very true. Because sometimes, right, you might need some friends. If you say to them, mm. uh, that's actually a very good technique that you're using. Because if you say to them, okay, share with me. What are you going through? If you want to talk about it, come, let, let's talk about it. Sometimes they might not feel like talking about it. Yeah. That is why they're having PTSD. Because mm. they were suppressing it for so long. So for you to slowly bring it out in them, you may not be able to go so direct, you know? Mm. You, you need to do like what you said. That's very good, actually. Would you like to just go hang out in Yushiamo for a while? Mm, yeah. Have a cup of coffee there? Mm. You know, with the music and mm. eat like our little Starbucks mm. there, right? <laughs> so that's actually a very nice environment. Mm. Slowly, she herself might feel ready to share. Yeah. At least just having that presence of knowing that you have someone there supporting you can even be helpful. us people to be positive so that we can influence others to be positive as well yes yeah. that's very true mm. be um, be the change that you mm. want to see in mm. others mm. yeah that's very true so, like uh, if you're having like negative thoughts it can like also influence others mood right yes mm. that's so so true mm. you know sometimes we don't realize it huh? we tend to like complain about assignment or lecturer mm. or, or you know subject mm. or, or university mm. or politics or something and then we don't realize we want to meet our friends mm -hmm. and it's so maybe not that often that you hang out with friends mm -hmm. and when you do meet each other accidentally we go into complaining mode mm -hmm. we accidentally go into like negativity mode mm -hmm. so what you said is very true you know mm -hmm. try to support each other with positivity mm -hmm. share funny stories mm -hmm. happy moods sometimes right by talking about something positive and happy it can bring the person this is called thought distraction mm -hmm. in psychology so it can just bring them away from their problem for a while and when they have the release of endorphins during mm. the thought distraction because they feel happy mm. you know when you're happy this is a happy hormone mm. so that release of endorphins can actually help them cope with that PTSD as well mm. in a way so that's very true what you said mm. these guys have very good tips yeah <laughs> very good really that's only that I have done like yes like, yeah yeah, yeah. So like um, in general, is there any like specific organization to help these yeah. people with PTSD? Yeah. Uh, go to the hospital or seek uh, for professional. How 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 do they want to help themselves? Um, let's see if they do have PTSD, right? I think we can start uh, locally, like small first. Mm. So you know, in UIA we have. Um, Counseling and Career Services Unit, mm -hmm. CCSC, mm -hmm. you can also approach them <coughs> and if you feel like you want to talk to any of the psychology, um, like, let's say, a, like a psychologist, I, I, I mean, I would love to like help and talk to, like, much as, like, let's say, for example, consultation, we can do it like a consultation mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, if you really want to know and check if you're having those symptoms. Mm -hmm. Another thing we can do is, you can also go to, you know, psychologist there, psychiatrist there, or if you want to go to private, if you're okay with it, you can also go to private. There are a lot of apps nowadays, you know, if you want to be anonymous, yeah. now there's got a lot of mental health apps. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, right, there is this uh, psychology student who just developed an app mm -hmm. called, oh gosh, what's its name? Is it, I, I 
you have not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, am. Um, it's got a very, very nice name. Um, uh, are you gonna have a break afterwards? Yeah, no more breaks. Um, um, one, this is no one, more, one more. Break. Oh, one more break. Oh, one more break. Yeah, I'll yeah. go get my phone afterwards. <laughs> I'll go and check it. It's right in my phone. But I think it's good for us to know, right? Yeah. So yeah. they developed an app. I think they're working together with mm. ICT or something. They developed mm. a very nice app actually. Um, they already I'm launched. I'm not sure if they launched it. They just had a pitch talk the other day. Oh. In a very uh, like a national kind of like you know they had a pitch talk. So I will share that with you afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm also involved in this app called Maluvi. Mm. I'm also a psychologist part time mm. over there. In, in, in my own time, work from home kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I do it in my own time. It's a, a help app in Play Store on Play Store. Cool. It's called Maluvi, yeah. and over there it's holistic. So we have we got a, a medical doctor. We got a dietitian even mm. because it started off as a health app, physical health app. Mm. But then you know when you start off with a physical health holistic app, right? It's all connected. Mm. Like your physical health can be connected to emotions, mm. can be connected to mental health, can be connected to diet and everything. Mm. So that is why we have psychologists there, and we have medical doctors there. Mm. So that app is also a very nice app to try out as well. Mm. And befrienders. Mm. Um, befrienders. Um. Yeah, befrienders. Talia Noor. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's also very good, you know. I know I called up befrienders before. I wanted mm. to try. <laughs> I was not having a serious, big, big problem, mm. but it was a problem. Mm. So I wanted to try. So I called up. Then they said, uh, hello, yes, befrienders. And I got a guy. La. So <laughs> maybe if you want a female, you can request, I think. Mm. Hey, now it's toll free number. Mm. Last time you have to pay. It, yeah, it takes your credit, you know. Mm. It, it's not my prepaid. Then when my prepaid finish, nobody called me back. <laughs> of course, because they don't call back their uh -uh. client uh -uh. because it's you know anonymous. Mm. But anyway, they started off with very nicely like, um, okay, what's your name? Of course, I'm going to give a fake name. Mm. My name is Sarah and I feel like I cannot handle and blah, blah, blah. And then, uh. and then they were very nice to me actually. Uh. So actually, and it's free. So I think, right, a very good immediate source of help, at least if you want to talk to someone, I think that's very nice to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, so we are going to have our last break, okay. I think. Um, so stay tuned for the name of the apps if yes. you want to find <laughs> out. Okay. We are going to reveal it just after this break. So yes. see you after this break. So we are back. Yeah. So yeah, this is our last break actually. Yeah. Okay, we're going to proceed. So, uh, Miss Fab. Based on your CV that we, uh, we before before, before that I forgot about the about the <laughs> app yeah yeah yes <laughs> the mystery app okay so they are developing this app called Relief for Me so Relief R E L I E F for the number four M E so I think it is not ready yet <laughs> but you know look out for that it's a very very wonderful uh, program that is I'm really proud of the UIA students you know coming up with this as well. Yeah. So that is something that at least you know people can reach out to and then talk to. Oh, okay. Kind of but okay, I'm just wondering about that. On your CV, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, your CV mentioned about the, your Bachelor of Computing. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Is it like, and you are also uh, we got the lecture of the psychology, mm. and I would like to know if there like if you ever uh, like uh, make um a research about uh disability in general. Yeah. Disability? Uh, uh, like in general, not like specific. Or uh, if you have a specific one, I would like to know. Uh, disability as in mental health? Disability? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. So for my PhD, actually, I was doing on uh, an intervention program mm. for adolescents who have HIV. Mm. Mm. And um, for so for these adolescents, they have mental health mm. issues, like emotional. as a disorder mm. but they have the symptoms some of the symptoms and even for my master's thesis it was with emotional issues um, so I don't, haven't done a research on disorder mm. yet but <laughs> I would definitely love to yeah mm -hmm. research more on that the last question for today or suggestion or opinion for the oh. people out there who are like currently battling with PTSD or battling with PTSD 
I would say it's people out there who are going through it who do not even know. Mm. But so it's good for you to perhaps go through the checklist of items and type something like our main checklist, right? For all our disorders is in this book called Diagnostical Statistical Manual, which is called the DSM. Mm. And this DSM usually contains all the criteria that you need to fulfill to in order to be diagnosed with a disorder. So just type in Google also you can do it. DSM five. The latest one is five. And then you can type PTSD. So you can see the exact criteria of how to know if you have these symptoms. Mm. Sometimes you might even have symptoms but not the disorder. Mm. Like I shared with you. Yeah. There's some characteristics of episodes. Mm. If you do have any characteristics of you know these symptoms or episodes, I would really encourage you to seek some help. If you are shy and you do not want to seek help, at least try to get help online. Mm. Either it is through mobile apps mm. or um, through websites like support groups, mm. FB groups, or any forums online. Mm. Or watch TEDx, TEDx talks mm. a lot about it. Watch Mel Robbins, uh, and I love watching her talks. And you can really buy <coughs> books that really talk about how to cope. And ultimately, it would be also good to seek some kind of help mm. from a psychologist or a counselor or a psychiatrist, someone who you can talk with. I think it would be good for you. Or if you have a very good friend, but remember, choose the right friend mm. who's yeah. going to support you in the right way. Mm. Yeah. The last word from the Miss Pam Ashby. So and we have like a really, really fruitful conversation, I must say, today. So and we, we also got the new information, yes. a lot of new information. And I guess um, this is the end. Uh, the end of our slot for today. Thank you for listening and thank you, Miss Pam, for coming. Thank we you appreciate so much. So much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to my wonderful DJs for today. Uh, you made me feel so comfortable and very, very easygoing and very nice to share with both of you. Thank you. It is so good having you here. So, with that, um, I guess uh, I end this. Um, slot with a song. <laughs>